anti-tank mines tough for the enemy and warn us of his presence. But anti-personnel mines can also be dangerous to our men. The number of men in the party, as well as the number of men working on any one mine, must be held to a minimum. Guards must be stationed at the edge of the field to keep out all men except those who are actually doing the work. Only one man is required in the final step of arming the mine. Before the safety pin is removed, the non-commissioned officer in charge of the party must make sure the mines have been properly recorded. This is extremely important. An error made at this time will likely result in casualties should we be required to remove the minefield. The party must be well controlled with the work proceeding from front to rear in taped off areas. The safety pins are each removed upon a signal from the non-commissioned officer. By this procedure, no one is allowed to withdraw through an area containing a live mine. The men then continue their job of setting the next line of mines. By always working within the taped off area, there won't be any danger of running into a live mine. The enemy will be expecting anti-personnel mines in an anti-tank minefield. So you have to be clever to fool the experts who will be set out to reconnoiter the field. Push type mines like this one being set under a board are hard to detect. Or one like this will probably prove a very unpleasant surprise to the enemy. Each completed section of the minefield should contain at least two lines of trip wires, irregularly placed, so it's impossible to walk through either line without encountering a mine. Of course, the tracing tape was only put in to show you the pattern of the trip wires. This is all the enemy will see. To be sure none of our men wanders onto the field, especially at night, it's a good idea to string up a fence between our troops and the mine field. Until contact is made with the enemy, guards should be stationed to warn all friendly troops and vehicles. Another good spot to plant anti-personnel mines is in barbed wire entanglements. Again, cleverly placed push type mines are a good idea for they're hard to detect. However, trip wires have the advantage of covering the most ground.
The anti-personnel mines will warn us in case the enemy tries to get through and will also succeed in blowing up a good portion of the raiding party. A line of tripwires just in front of the entanglement is also effective. Now these tripwires outlined in tracing tape will give you some idea of the various ways in which the tripwire anti-personnel mines can be set. Naturally, there is no standard pattern. You have to vary your arrangement or the enemy will get wise to your method and remove the mines without much trouble. A roadblock is another defensive obstacle where anti-personnel mines are used to advantage. Any or all of the various anti-personnel mines can be set to make it tough for the enemy when he tries to reduce the obstacle. But don't forget, every anti-personnel mine must be recorded and then reported, whether you're setting one or a hundred. Anti-personnel mines are not set just to prevent the removal of anti-tank mines, wire entanglements, or roadblocks. Often they are laid as an obstacle themselves to block a favorable avenue of enemy approach, like this defile. Here's where the bounding mines and M3 mines can really do some damage. As always, the mines are being laid in sections so that they can be properly recorded and the men are working from front to rear in taped off areas. The trip wires should completely cover the area so that it will be almost impossible for enemy troops to pass through without losing a lot of men and giving us ample warning of their approach. An outfit that does a good job leaves very little evidence of the deadly reception that awaits the enemy. Now it's up to you to practice and work with these mines, to learn the safe procedure for setting them and the method of recording them. They can be valuable and deadly weapons in the right hands. Just think of the Jap soldier who tries to remove an activated anti-tank mine and lose his face instead. Or the Nazi who tries to get through our barbed wire and really puts his foot in it. Or the enemy troops who went into one of our anti-personnel minefields. The explosion is a signal for our mortar barrage. And they're trapped between the anti-personnel mines and the mortar barrage. <laughs> 